water for my thirsty soul. I need you. Oh, I need you. Oh, brothers and sisters, we always need our Lord and Savior to lift us up, to carry us through the fire. Because sometimes we have to go through a fire or a great storm. And he's there for you and me. If you're saved today, amen? Amen. And he hears us. I know that he hears us. And you can talk to him at any time. He's there for you. As long as you're there for him. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, we all need to get on our knees and and ask the Lord for help. And we know that he is faithful. And if you're a believer in Jesus, you believe he came incarnate from heaven, died for your sins and mine, was buried, rose, and you've repented of your sinful ways, you have the Holy Spirit in you, brothers and sisters. And when you call on Jesus, he's there to help you and to heal you. And he always hears us. Amen? Amen. We have different diversities in life. We have good times. And we have trials. Sometimes we have trials because God just wants to test your faith as he did Abraham and had him go up to sacrifice his son Isaac. And sometimes it's a chastening because we've strayed from his word. We've disrespected him and not did what he says to do. And so, if we come to him humbly, on our knees, he's so full of grace and love for us, he'll come back to us. We have to make proper changes, amen? Amen. And so, I want to look at two examples of people who have some sort of tragedy in their life, and then we'll get into the message. So if you brought your Bibles, please turn to the book of John, chapter 5. And Jesus comes upon a man, and we'll start reading verse 5. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, He knew that he already had been in that condition a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be made well? Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Obviously, this man is a believer in God. He was healed, and the first thing he does, he goes to the temple and gets on his knees to thank the Lord for the healing. But Jesus meets up with them and tells him, To go and sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to him. There's no difference with you and me, brothers and sisters. When we are chastened, we got to wake up, come back to him, and he will heal us. He hears our cries, and he is the ultimate healer, and he will heal you. When you're in the sick bed, he will come in the operating room, And he will make the crooked straight. Amen? Amen. So praise our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. So the second passage we'll read is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And here we have Paul is appealing to the Corinthians. He's telling them that you know, all these other apostles or preachers, but so is he. And not to look down on him. And so we'll pick it up in verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? 
I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequently. In death, often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. So brothers and sisters, this is Paul. The Apostle Paul who writes 13 books of the Bible. And as he said, he was in prison more than anyone, beaten more than any of those that were leaders of the church at that time, even stoned and left for dead. But he never lost his faith. And God always healed him with the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, God gave the, all the apostles more grace to be able to endure what they were going through. And that grace was more of the Holy Spirit. And brothers and sisters, you and I can ask for more of the Holy Spirit. Every morning when you get up, ask Him to refill you up with the Holy Spirit. Because you can lose the Holy Spirit. As He says, you are the salt. But if the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing. The flavor is the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. The prodigal son, right? When he leaves and spends all his money on lustful things, right? It's an example. He leaves the Lord. He doesn't follow the Lord anymore. And he says, I'm not worthy to even be called your son. Because he humbles himself after he, he, turned his back on God. And that's what some of you might do, or maybe you have. But you can come back, as the prodigal son does, and you can be filled with that Holy Spirit again. But it's not a microwave. You have to know that. It's not just a prayer. You've got to prove your worth back to him. You've got to make proper changes. Get rid of that evil company that caused you to stray and not follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. And then when you are sick in that bed and you call on Jesus, he will be in that operating room and he will make that crooked straight and he will heal you and he will make your life that was crooked straight and you will walk a straight line, a narrow line to heaven to be with our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, I'd like to just say a prayer for you, if you'll bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. Dear Lord, please forgive us for our sins and any kind of disrespect we've ever done to you. Help us to stay on that narrow path, Lord. And thank you for chasing us when you do to correct us. And thank you for receiving us again and again and again. Oh, your love is great, Lord, and we just thank you for it and praise you for it. And please fill us all with your Holy Spirit. Fill us up, Lord, with double your Holy Spirit. For as much spirit as you so desire to give us, Lord. And we pray this in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters.